Hello friends, this video on ecosystem part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now look at the flow of energy in a grazing food chain. So we already understood what is a grazing food chain. The food chain starts with producers and ends with the carnivores. That is producer, herbivores and then carnivores. So that's a grazing food chain. So now we will see, we already saw that how different organisms are dependent on each other for food. And food is something that gives us energy to do work. So that means whenever we consume food, we get some energy. So this amount of energy decreases at successive top tropic levels. So what does that mean? That means that let us suppose if a grazing food chain, as we know, it starts with the producers. These producers are eaten up by the herbivores and the herbivores in turn are eaten up by the carnivores. So now when the herbivores eat the producers, they get their food. So when they eat food, they get some energy. Similarly, when the herbivores are eaten up by the carnivores, so carnivores get their food, so they get some energy. So basically the energy gets transferred from producers to herbivores to carnivores. So now, the question is how much energy gets transferred from one tropic level to the next tropic level. So we understood from this that energy gets transferred from the first trophic level to the second trophic level then again from second trophic level to the third trophic level. But how much energy gets transferred because this process of transfer of energy will keep on continuing. So let us see what happens during energy transfer. We will start with the first trophic level that is the producers. So these producers, from where will they get their energy? They will get it from the sun. So only 1% of solar energy finally gets converted into food. So you remember, as I said, now out of the total solar radiation, only 50% of the solar radiation is photosynthetically active radiation. In that also, the plants can absorb around 2 to 10% of that photosynthetic active radiation. So finally, the amount of solar energy which gets converted into food, that is just 1%. Right? So only this much of energy gets converted into food. So let us suppose if this is sun, so the solar energy is coming to the plants and the plants are able to convert only 1% of it, of the energy into the food. So what is happening? The solar energy from the sun, the energy which is coming is solar energy and this solar energy gets converted into chemical energy because in plants you do not have solar energy, right? You do not have light coming out of the plants. So the plants store it as chemical energy and how they convert it? This conversion takes place during the process of photosynthesis. Okay, so that is clear. Now what happens? The next trophic level. So this was the first trophic level. So now comes the second trophic level. So these herbivores, for example, here it is a grasshopper. So this grasshopper will eat the plants. So that means it is eating something which contains only 1% of the solar energy. Right? So now what will happen to this grasshopper? Only 10% of the producer's energy turned into its body. So now when this eats up the plant, some part of the energy is lost as per the second law of thermodynamics. So during energy conversion from one form to another, some energy will be lost. So at each trophic level, some amount of energy will get reduced. So how much percentage of energy will pass on to this grasshopper? That is 10%. So 10% energy gets transferred. So this arrow indicates the transfer of energy, straight line arrow, right? So only 10% of the energy which was stored in plant gets transferred into grasshopper. Then comes the secondary consumer. So this frog will eat the grasshopper. So the amount of energy which will pass on to the frog will be 10% of what was stored in the grasshopper's body. So basically at each trophic level, the amount of energy is gradually decreasing. That is why we say that the amount of energy decreases at successive trophic level. So as you go higher, as you go towards the higher trophic level, the amount of energy will keep on decreasing. Finally, when you reach the tertiary consumer, which will feed upon the secondary consumer, in that case, the energy will further reduce. 
So this is how energy flows from one trophic level to another trophic level. So basically what was happening in, in this entire process of energy flow was that initially plant absorbed only 1% of solar energy into food. Why? Because the amount of energy which it could absorb from the sun, some part of it lost as heat, some part of it was used up in metabolic processes, some part was used in growth, respiration etc. So basically whatever was left out that got transferred to the primary consumer and that was only 10%. Similarly, this 10% energy is now available with the grasshopper that is the primary consumer and thus is available to the secondary consumer. But again, during the energy transfer process, some energy will be lost as heat and therefore only 10% of that energy will pass on to the second, I mean to the third trophic level or the secondary consumer and this process will continue. So based on all this was proposed Lindemann's 10% law. So the law itself was named as 10% law because at each trophic level only 10% of energy gets transferred from the previous trophic level. So as per this law only 10% of food energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next higher trophic level. So that means this is the lowest trophic level, this is the first trophic level, this is second, this is third, this is fourth and this is fifth. So these are the different trophic levels. So what's going to happen here as you go higher the trophic level, every time only 10% of energy will get transferred from the previous trophic level. Therefore the amount of energy reduces drastically. Therefore, food chains consist of three or four levels mostly because as the number of levels keep on increasing, the amount of energy which is received at the higher levels reduces too much. Now, we do not want the amount of energy to reduce that much. So, it is always preferred that food chains are not very long. So, a three-step food chain or a four-step food chain is more preferred over a five-step or six-step food chain. Because here in this case, if you take an example, let us suppose the energy here was 1000 calories. So what will be the energy at the second trophic level? It will be 10% of this, which will be 100 calories. At the third trophic level, it will be 10% of this, which will be 10 calories. So at the fourth trophic level, it will be 1 calorie. And finally, at the fifth trophic level, it is going to be 0, 1 calorie. So just imagine from plants, it started with 1000 calories and this hawk would receive only 0 0.1 calorie, which is extremely less. So it is always preferred to have a food chain with less number of levels. So now we are going to talk about a new concept of standing crop. So let us see what is standing crop. So it is the total biomass of a trophic level at a given time. So the name itself you can notice here it is standing crop. So that means something which is standing, something which is giving its attendance, it is still there. So it is the total biomass which stays there at a particular trophic level at a particular time. So that is known as standing crop. Now this is nothing but the mass of living material at this particular trophic level at a time. Now this mass when we talk about the biomass at a trophic level which mass are we considering are we considering the mass including the weight of water or we are considering dry weight well considering dry weight would be more accurate because in that case there is no water present so it will actually give you the mass of the living material so this is what we know as biomass if you have forgotten. So what is biomass? It is uh, the biological material obtained from living organisms which can be used as a resource for obtaining energy. So this is known as this is a terminology called standing crop. Now what is its significance? Why are we talking about standing crop here? That's because we, when we talk about flow of energy from one trophic level to another, we also talk about the flow of biomass from one trophic level to another. So the amount of biomass also changes as the trophic level changes. Now this biomass which remains at one particular trophic level, that is called standing crop and that is why we discussed this here in this context. 
So biomass is expressed in terms of fresh or dry weight, as I said, but considering dry weight is more accurate because there is no water involved here. So it is something like if you try, want to understand fresh weight and dry weight, you can take this example. When you your clothes are weight, weight and you uh, put them for drying, what happens? Initially, the weight seems to be more due to the presence of water. But when they get dry, when all the water is removed out of them, that time the weight reduces. And that is the real weight of the clothes, right? But when they are weight due to the presence of water, their weight increases. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.